Hello, I'm Sanjay Jogia. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer and a Canon ambassador based in London. Last time we spoke about natural and continuous light. This time we're looking at flash. Light works in the same way whether it's flash, daylight or continuous light. Only with a flash it's a brief burst. So why use flash? Well they give a huge light output that can compete with daylight and even sunlight. Whereas common continuous lights don't have the same power to fill in the strong shadows caused by bright sunlight for example. It's an instantaneous burst of light and the amount of light depends on whether you set your flash to manual where you can control how much light you want or if you choose through the lens metering known as TTL. TTL is where the camera reads the amount of light entering the lens and decides how much power the flash needs to fill in the shadows to balance with the brightest parts of the scene sky for example. Okay so we're just in my garden, birds chirping, kids playing in the background and we can have a little bit of fun outdoors during the day with uh, just a tree that's in the garden and uh, a flash. So just one speed light. So if you own a speed light then I'll show you what you can do with it. You can have a little bit of fun. Um, if you have a remote trigger as well it really helps so that you can actually create some interesting lighting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you uh, what I could do with this because it's a very interesting looking tree, lots of interesting textures on it and uh, it just basically means you can create a little bit of drama so it's nothing fancy, it's just my back garden, three beds, semi and harrow so I'll be using a light stand uh, but if you don't have one use someone in the house, use your children or your brothers or sisters or something like that to be a voice activated light stand. If you don't have anybody else you could probably just buy something like this online, they're easily, they're readily available so uh, you won't have any problem with that. I'm going to place this off camera. I'm going to place Roshni by that tree. I'm going to pose her over there and I'm going to show you what, it, what kind of drama we can create with the flash just off camera. The camera set to TTL. I'll set the camera up on manual but I'll talk about the camera settings so you understand what it is I'm doing to try and create this. Okay so in the background is my lovely wife Roshni who's going to be helping me out over here and I'll have her step into the shot and I pose her against the tree and I'll show you how I set the lighting up and how I actually create the scene. Basically I'm going to use the drama of the tree, the texture of the trunk against Roshni. So I'm going to light Roshni with the flash and I'm going to add actually just a standard household floodlight to light the tree up and create a little bit of drama. So these are things that easy things that you can do because I want to show you how you can create some interesting photographs with just things around the house. And we'll extend it up. Now when you're placing your lights when you're photographing people it's very important to make sure that you try to light from above and not from below. So you want the flash to be above their eye line so it creates beauty lighting. If the light comes from below it becomes ghoul lighting so we don't want to do that. It looks, it looks ghoulish and evil. Okay so I have the flash on Roshni over here and that's just going to illuminate her and hopefully just pick her out. I've actually tightened the beam on there. You can zoom these flashes in and out and it makes the beam tighter and wider if that's what you want to do. And I have this floodlight on the trunk in the background just to create a little bit of separation. My camera settings, I'm just using the EOS R over here with just 2470 standard lens. And my camera settings are 200th of a second, F4 at 200 ISO. Okay, and I've got the actual flash setting, the trigger on the top there is just set the TTL. So this will tell the flash how much power to put out. So let's see how this looks. Where you place your flash will have a big impact on the look and feel of your photo. For example, if you mount your flash onto the camera, it limits the directionality of the light and shadows to a certain degree. However, modern flashes and cameras can communicate with each other via dedicated radio triggers or via multiple flashes. This will give you much more control and versatility with your creativity. Whilst direct, forward-facing, on-camera flash will be unflattering and harsh, you can still create beautiful soft light by pointing the flash in a different direction. For example, you can bounce the flash upwards and use the ceiling as a diffused reflector. My personal favourite is to use a wall to bounce the light from. 
just be sure to turn the subjects toward the wall too. Another alternative is to bounce it from a wall and slightly upwards for a light that looks more directional. Be careful not to use a coloured surface or you run the risk of introducing a colour cast to your photo. If you have a transmitter, you can control the shape and direction of your light with much greater effect by having the flash off camera. Separation between the camera and the flash position allows you to balance the light and shadow in your image. After all, shadows are as important as light when creating striking images. The position of the light horizontally is as important as the height of the light above the camera and the subject. Be careful not to separate the camera and the light too much, otherwise you may have unwanted shadows. Okay, so come up on here and turn this way again. Flash stand and put it up on the table so that it's coming from above you. Bit of bob, and you're just going to turn toward the flash a little bit more, and then you're going to turn your shoulders this way. Brush the hair off your shoulder there. Okay, and we've got some amazing sky behind us over here. So there. Cropping to lose the houses and the garage in the background. So I'm underexposed to f14 3 20th of a second at 200 ISO. I want lots of depth of field to pick up all that dramatic sky in the background there. So I need to get a lower angle so I can get some of that blue. So you need to lean into me from there you go. Give me a waist. Okay, on one, three, two. If you really want to be creative, you might consider modifying your light. As a professional wedding photographer, I own dedicated light shaping modifiers, but it's possible that you don't. You may not even be able to get them during lockdown, but there's nothing stopping you from making one like the one I have here. As a professional, I need to be able to control my light to shape it so the light goes where I need it to go. So we normally use something like this, which is a snoot. And this attaches to the front. And as you can see, there's a little funnel on the front of that. And what that does is it funnels the light and it sends it in the direction that I want it to go. Now, if you don't have one of these, and you probably don't. You can actually make one. So here's one I made earlier. It's just a toilet roll attached to a piece of card which has a hole cut out in it. And uh, I've just taped it to my flash and it will do the same thing. And you'll see the effect that it creates. It can create very interesting effects. It allows you just to stop the light spilling in places you don't want it to go. So you can create some drama if you want to create a close up portrait and you just want light to go onto the face or a particular area on the background or something like that, then it's really handy. A photograph like this, I actually want to come in nice and tight because the rest of the body is going to be dark. So the whole point of this is just to draw attention to the face. Let's see how it looks. So tilt that way. Now just turn your chin. That's it. Hold up there. On one, three, two, one. Okay, so we're just in the back of the house now by the patio. I'm going to use this brick wall and I'm going to use the same flash with the makeshift snoot. What I want to demonstrate here is how you can just use a normal brick wall to create something interesting using the flash. There's two ways we can use this wall. One is by just using the available light and we'll end up with a quite a nice soft airy shot, but it's not going to look particularly interesting. But we can add a bit of drama in there using the flash and our toilet roll snoot. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take a photograph of this brick wall uh, with, without a flash and I'm going to underexpose the image. So essentially what I'm going to do is make the brick wall look dark. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to create a little pool of light with this flash that's just going to fire across the wall to create some drama. And then later on I'll bring Roshni into that shot. So if we get the base shot right, it's what we call a plate shot, then we know that we can layer the light in on top and things become easier. So always start with plate shot, get the basic exposure you want first, then you layer it in by just bringing in the light afterwards. So the settings I want to work with are f2.8, which means I'm going to get a very short depth of field. So when I focus on Roshni, I can slightly blur out the background so it's not competing with her again. 
and then uh, my shutter speed is at one eight hundredth of a second so it's quite a high shutter speed which means that the daylight suddenly looks a lot darker we're getting a lot less of that light coming in so even though what you're seeing it looks like it's bright daylight over here by having a higher shutter speed we darken everything so it's starting to look a little bit more like night okay so we can still create that nighttime look during the day just by bringing the shutter speed up but we keep the iso low so i'm, I'm at 200 iso here and uh let's get this plate shot and we'll show you what that looks like okay so now that we have the dark plate shot you can see what the intention is over here now we'll bring in the flash so i've switched on my trigger it's still on ttl i haven't changed the power output the compensation is still on zero and then we'll have the flash come across and it'll create a little cone of light so i'm going to zoom zoom in nice and tight because I want a tight shot. I don't want too much of the brickwork coming in. So we'll show you that pattern, what that light looks like over here. So you'll see from the picture how you get a funnel of light, a little cone of light firing across the wall that creates this interesting look and feel. And it's in that zone of light that we're going to place Roshni. Okay, so now we have Roshni in the shot and I'm going to have a turn toward the flash and I'm going to go for a nice top half photograph here with the light just coming into her face at this stage. I showed you the pattern of the brickwork and I showed you the pattern of the light and we're just going to place her face in that pattern of the light. So heel, knee, hip away. That's cool. Chin away from me slightly. Okay. And eyes just off camera, just off there. That's fine. Okay. On one, three, two, one. As with continuous light sources like lamps or window light, the closer the subject is to the flash, the less power you need. This is great because you put less strain on your flash and its batteries, but you'll also have softer shadows, which is great for beauty portraits. If you want a harder, starker look to your images, then you might consider moving your flash further away. Okay, so we'll diffuse the light even more by actually placing this flash behind the curtain. Let's see what we can create from that. So in theory, this whole thing will act like a big diffusion screen. And it's just a net curtain. I'm not changing my camera settings. They're still set to the plate shot settings that we created earlier on. But essentially, the camera is going to take a reading of the scene and figure out just how much power it needs from the flash. and. In theory, it should light up the entire net curtain and give us a nice big soft light coming through there. But it's also lighting up the brick wall and it's competing with the subjects, it's competing with Roshni. What I'm going to do is actually bring her away from the, the brick wall now. So Roshni, take one big step toward me. That's it. Okay. And just turn toward the window. And if we need to, we can actually bring her closer as well. So just take a step toward it. Okay. Hold that there. On one, three, two, one. There you go. So that's even softer now and that's what you can do with your flash and just things around the house. So net curtains for a big diffusion screen essentially, creating snoop from toilet roll and a little piece of card and just using a, a brick wall and a tree in the back garden to make it look interesting. Remember, there are no right or wrong rules for creativity and fun. So let yourself loose and use this time in lockdown to unleash your creativity and discover your potential and empower your passion. Stay safe, stay positive and be creative.